So, you're out with your friends on a Friday night bar hopping. And y'all are jumping from bar to bar getting hammered without stopping. Then you get to one particular spot where you get this immediate thought. I think it's time for shots. So guess what? Ta-da! However, before you even say a word, the bartender asks you and your squad for y'all's order in a way really absurd. So y'all trying to get drunk, lit, f***ed up, or blacked out? Let me guess, all four, because who doesn't like going down that route? <laughs> but next thing you know, he's taking shots with you. And as y'all are getting more faded, you feel like he's now part of your crew. And because y'all are practically BFFs, you feel like you can ask him anything due to his great vibe. From drinks he recommends, to other fun bars in the area, to even why he looks like he's five. Because what occupation allows you to get drunk while you're working? And oh my god, is this guy behind the bar now twerking? Yes, for I must express, for I don't want to live life with no regrets. Boy, if you don't get- However, out of curiosity, you ask the bartender, how did you get this job? He then gives you the smile and laughter-filled nod as he begins to explain. Well, here's how it's done. For here's my story of how I became one. What up, my peeps and goons? I am Daniel Moon, and here's my story that'll rhyme like your favorite tune. Boom! So some quick background information about me. I was born in Boston, but grew up in Centerville, Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C. And I'm Korean, well, technically a quarter north and 75% south. And just to share a tad more, yes, my grandfather escaped North Korea with some of his siblings during the Korean War. But in general, I've been a bartender for about five years, along with being a bar manager for one year of my career. Now, having said all that, I'm gonna give y'all some quick information to remember. For there are two primary ways to becoming a bartender. Door number one is pretty clear cut. Work as a server in a restaurant that has a bar and work yourself up. Or become a bar back at a bar, which is basically a bartender's assistant. For this route is the best due to the fact that it'll be the most consistent. Why? Well, cause you'll be working with a bartender each shift, so absorb everything and stay devoted. And as long as you work hard and learn all the ins and outs, you'll eventually get promoted. But then there's also door number two that has a lot of knowledge and tools. For this is the route I chose, which is attend bartending school. And well, looking back, I forgot how much I broke most of my family's traditional rules. However, I'm glad I did what was right for me, despite in the beginning I looked like a fool. So around late 2016, I was still working at Best Buy for what I guess you can call my career, and it felt like torture because I was burnt out from being with the company for at that point almost five years. And this was also around the time I was in college studying to become a pharmacist because my mom said this was a good way about. But long story short, bro, I was f***ing miserable and I was just looking for any way out. Then one day I was venting to my friend about all my problems. However, she came up with a solution that could help me quickly solve them. Have you ever tried bartending because they make really good money? Yet despite being 23 at that time, I didn't drink nor know anything about alcohol, which with hindsight is kind of funny, but I was mainly thinking, how do I learn when I have zero experience? Cause this had me appealed. And then she simply told me, you can go to bartending school for it's a good way to get started within that field. And so I found one in Arlington, Virginia, right across the Potomac River from our nation's capital. For this is where I started my bartending training. And at the time it seemed very practical. However, during this stage of my life, I had just worked Black Friday and was getting into the busy holiday season. Also, this isn't mentioning that I had to go to my college classes due to my mom's suggestive logical reason. But I wanted a change in my life, so I signed up for bartending school. Behind my mom's back, by the way. And balancing all these things at the same time was pretty cruel. However, I wasn't going to make an excuse. So I woke up at 4 in the morning every day at that time, where I'd go to the gym first, then head to my bartending school at 6 to practice techniques and recipes for 3 hours before 9, which is when my bartending class would start. Then after 2 hours of learning this art, I'd go take my college course, then do my homework despite I was exhausted and had to go to Best Buy to work to finish up my night. Then I'd repeat this cycle for two weeks straight until I graduated from bartending school where I thought, yes, I can now spread my wings. But then I came to this dark realization that I needed to make a decision for I couldn't bounce between all of these things. Basically, I was at the end of the semester and the holidays were coming to an end. However, I believed this was the new path for me that was going to translate to my ascend. Plus, I just felt this strong nudge from God within my heart. And I wanted to give this 100% by truly exploring the spark also, just to tell y'all the type of person that I am, I'm one of those people that likes to put all my eggs in one basket. And the majority will think I'm done with no backup plan, where I'm essentially digging my own grave prepared with a casket. But as that poker player that goes all in on one bet in a manner so vigorously, it's just my personal reminder to the world. I also like to live dangerously. However, why is this my mindset when approaching decisions that have me lost in the sauce? Well, I'm about to share something from Lily Singh's book on how to be a boss. For there's a particular quote that really stuck out to me. If you really want to do something, don't have a plan B. Having a plan B means you're expecting plan A to fail. 
and that isn't the right attitude. Because when you focus on that card that gets you out of jail, you can't concentrate on your true goal with precise exactitude. So I did the unthinkable. I quit Best Buy. And for the third time of my life, I dropped out of college. Because I truly had faith in my hard work and with all this newly acquired knowledge. But with the first bartending job I ever got, something manifested from my darkest fears. After working a full 40 hours that first week, I barely made 250 bucks and that's with me working New Year's. Yeah, at Best Buy, while working full time in one week, $500 is what I normally got paid. And this new breakthrough job was supposed to help me make more and not cut in half what I made. However, I eventually confessed to my mom about what I thought was going to be my new life's mission. And obviously she was furious because I dropped out of school, which led to her showing zero remorse for my poor decision. Also keep in mind, I come from a conservative Christian family background and most of their mindsets are like, Jesus take the wheel cause you'll help me be found. Then you got my attitude that's like, I don't give up cause that's my personal voices conscious sound. But basically, if it involves anything that puts you under the influence, it's immediately labeled as the devil's playground. Cause Asian families be thinking that kind of stuff involves gangs and thugs. And they'll even ask you, Why you go out? You try to sell drugs? And it didn't help that my entire family was super traditional. For in their minds, you have to go to college if you want to earn a salary that's considered livable. Cause if you don't conform, you'll be mocked for not following their ways and you'll constantly hear, Why you not knock me? However, what ended up happening was my mom eventually kicked me out and I was left with almost nothing. So I turned to my best friend, but even he discouraged me, which was quite crushing. And since I had no options left during this downfall, I eventually prayed saying, Dear Heavenly Father, I don't know what the f to do at all. Can you please guide me because my back is against the wall? And then he answered my prayer immediately, for I heard his clear call. Daniel, go to DC and I promise that you're going to find a job quickly. And I remember being terrified asking God, Are you trying to trick me? I mean, I might live right outside of the capital, but I know nothing about the city. Plus, I only have $250, and my financial situation is far from pretty. Perhaps I should turn back and return to Best Buy so I can make something because money is something I lack. Then he simply replied, You have enough. Just have faith and trust in my plan. And I was like, Welp, I got no other option but to walk by faith. So I walked forward and began. And in spite of getting lost in different parts of the city, and even within the metro system, I was able to find a job within a few weeks, just because I followed God's voice and wisdom. But this is the part that was insane. After a few days of training, I received my first tip out, which completely blew my brain. I made $300 in one shift. However, as my manager is handing me the money I made that night, she is holding onto it then proceeds to speak to me looking a bit of fright. Daniel wearing slow season due to winter, so keep that to account. I just don't want you to be discouraged by this little tip amount. And I remember in that moment, I was holding back my tears because I was thinking, wait, it only gets better from here? And when I got in my car, I just thanked God because I was so grateful for the timing seemed so right and absolutely fateful. But I went from making 25K annually to about $60,000 a year when I switched my career lane. And due to this new income, I was able to go to EC Las Vegas by myself again, while also being able to treat my little sister to her first time seeing LeBron in Cleveland at a live Caps game. And just, this was when I truly started to live my life, when I thought all was down the drain. Because, whew, bartending was so much fun when I take the time to look back at all the memories on this pathway. For there's a countless amount of stories I have that all form me into the person I am today. Like, I learned how to set healthy boundaries for myself, as well as being comfortable in my own skin while also making a ton of friends, along with meeting a ton of people that constantly make me grin. And obviously I can't forget about my ultimate win. Yeah, I'm talking about falling in love, for I've got so much to tell that I don't even know where to begin. However, in the end, I do want to take the time to encourage those of y'all that don't believe in a higher power to please keep going despite being stuck in a situation that's making you feel quite down and sour. So just have faith in yourself and your work ethic, cause you can claw out of that lowly hour. And for those of y'all that believe in the Holy Spirit or in someone that's watching from above, I just want to tell you to trust in God's plan because he's guiding you with purpose and love. Sure, you may be in certain lows during these difficult hardships, but please don't give up by calling it quits. For we live by faith, not by sight. And this is just a life lesson that we all must apply to shine bright. So keep in mind you will get tested through adversity as God writes your story. However, remember once you get through it, you'll see he just wanted to build your faith so you can bring him glory. Because you might not be able to see where you're going, making you feel like you're in another country as a lost foreigner. But the truth is, that's why you must continue to walk by faith because your breakthrough could literally be within the next step around the corner.